Good morning, Stackers. Uh, warm welcome. Uh, I just wanted to start with this. So I have my, um, this is Srikant here. Uh, I'm part of the Wipro Technologies DevOps team. And I have my co-presenter, uh, Devadatta, from the Rackspace. And I'll just go with the, the small introduction about uh, Wipro for some of you who are not aware of it. So we're a global IT services company and spread across 100, more than 100 countries. And we have been working across the breadth and depth of the technologies, uh, right from process consulting to infrastructure management, as well as from ERP, as well as to the containers and all. And as part of the open source, uh, we have been, uh, it's been an exciting journey for us. Uh, we've been uh, part of open source and especially working with uh, various meetups in OpenStack. And so far we have been uh, really taking the knowledge uh, from the OpenStack experiences to the customers. It's been a great journey so far and it's been an exciting time uh, being here as well in the summit. So uh, before getting into the, the today's topic, I just thought I wanted to highlight a few points uh, for the, over the last three, four days. There have been very interesting sessions, uh, great keynotes, and one of the underlying themes has been that how do we make OpenStack more flexible, more manageable? How do we take it to the customers in a much more simpler, flexible way? And the, another point is also about the collaboration aspects by which we are able to make sure the OpenStack is adopted easily, extensively. And uh, these are some of the things which are also underlying in today's presentation as well. So about the continuous integration. So uh, before we get into that, one of the aspects is about the DevOps point of view. So uh, this is part of the global, uh, bigger picture of DevOps. While we are not going to jump and talk about DevOps heavily, we want to re restrict it towards the infrastructure perspective. And looking at the, the way OpenStack is adopted and looking at the current trend of DevOps where every enterprise is eagerly embracing the DevOps part of it. And we thought it's a very good, interesting scenario to extend OpenStack's capabilities and add some DevOps perspective so that the users who are embarking on DevOps journey will be able to leverage these aspects. So that's the sort of an idea that we thought of working on. So uh, as part of uh, meetups in uh, Wipro, uh, we worked with uh, uh, Devdatta as part of one of the meetups in Solem. Uh, then we thought of coming up with this integration of uh, Solem with any of the general uh, CI CD tools. So we, that's how the context for the today's discussion. Now, uh, we all know that DevOps is one of the critical things which heavily talked about, so, uh, but then it's not just the tools uh, that will make the DevOps, it's a journey where it is touching upon organizational aspects, processes aspects, apart from tools and technologies as well. And uh, the recent developments in the infrastructure we have seen in a lot of discussions, we are moving towards containerization, a lot of cloud related aspects. And these are all enabling the infrastructure to be much more flexible. And that also helps, that also means that uh, um, uh, adopting DevOps is going to be much more simpler. It will help in overall journey for the customers. Uh, in the current discussion, uh, we are seeing, we're going to see how the infrastructure is affecting the overall DevOps journey. So we have seen the containers coming into picture. So that's going to be more of a, the configuration management has become more simpler. Though now it's, it's easier to, that it also means that it is easier to expedite the DevOps adoption. Uh, looking at the technology aspects from a DevOps point of view, critical things which we keep talking about is a continuous integration, continuous deployment continuous testing, and it's a continuum of security monitoring, et cetera. So the ultimate nirvana is to have a continuous delivery where we can, we should be able to deliver anything into production on demand. So as part of that, we are trying to focus on uh, two of the critical things, continuous integration and the continuous uh, delivery standpoint. So this is an analogy where we are saying that it will help to generate, for example, an energy sector. We're just generating the power and then we are delivering it for the usage, so just a small analogy. <coughs> And on the continuous integration part, uh, so far most of the continuous integration tasks, they're more or less streamlined, more or less stable, more or less uh, well-defined. Uh, but the continuous deployment is a very interesting aspect. Given that uh, there's a bit of, every enterprise is unique. Uh, there are really different set of processes. The requirements are slightly different. And that's the reason why we have a plethora of tools uh, in, the, in the DevOps point of view. And in spite of having so many tools, uh, there's not one single tool which can fit all the requirements. And that's where we still have to stitch out some of these tools to make sure we have a customer-specific uh, DevOps platform. Now, in that point, uh, the 
integration standpoint, the continuous integration, the tasks which I mentioned are in general, uh, these are typically more or less streamlined and we know we have multiple tools to manage them. On the deployment side, uh, looking at the type of infrastructure each customer is looking at, uh, the deployment uh, process could change and there will be, that's the complexity that we are seeing today. And uh, we thought it's more interesting to leverage the deployment capabilities, uh, deployment orchestration capabilities of Solem in OpenStack and see how we can uh, marry these two parts, the continuous integration of any of the generic tools and how we can integrate that with uh, Solem. Um, they will be talking about the Solem in detail before we get in there. So when we were selecting one of the CI tools uh, to really integrate, so this is one of the surveys which uh, was presented in InfoQ uh, a, a year back. And if you look at there are a plethora of tools and we thought we'll start with Jenkins, uh, which is being one of the widely used tool, which has got a very good adoption and a lot of plugins are available. So we thought, let's take this as one of the use cases for us to demonstrate uh, the integration between these two. So it's again another Jen Jenkins user conference uh, content, which uh, actually explains how it's also one of the interesting things is that there's a lot of adoption rate. There's a lot of people who are interested in moving on to the DevOps uh, using Jenkins. And there's a lot of customer base which is also using OpenStack. So it will be an interesting thing for us to start with that. And this is on the OpenStack usage uh, in terms of how people are looking at the QA and the CI part of it. And we thought uh, it's just a sort of assertion of how the whole use case can be expanded out. So one of the things we looked at was to how we can take it. Now, there are multiple capabilities, multiple scenarios that will come in. Uh, for example, when we are looking at Jenkins for continuous integration in Solem for the deployment, and Solem also has got various capabilities. And one of the, uh, my personal view has been that most of the tools which are in DevOps, they're trying to have overlapping features. So it's very difficult to segregate them, box them. But the idea is to take the best of the things and see which is suitable for that particular enterprise at that particular point in time and then get the best of the ways. So uh, I just hand over to, to Dev to speak about Solem before we actually get into the overall implementations part. Thank you, Shrikant. So OpenStack Solem is a uh, system which allows you to test, build, and deploy applications natively on OpenStack. So it's an application lifecycle management system uh, you can also think of it as a platform as a service with CI CD capabilities and it can be configured in different ways. You can use Solem only to do the continuous integration parts natively within Solem or you can do CI and CD or just use the continuous deployment part. And that is the option that uh, the Ashish and Shrikant's team have used for this POC. So, where does Solem fit in context with all the other rest of the OpenStack services? The way I like to think about it is on the bottom most layer, we have these basic blocks for storage and networking, uh, projects like Swift and Cinder, Manila, Neutron, and so on. On top of that, there are these compute capabilities, uh, Glance and Nova, Ironic, things like that. And then Magnum can fit in either that layer or also on the orchestration layer uh, with Heat and Mistral. And then on top of that, there are these application lifecycle uh, projects like Solem and Murano. So Solem fits at that level and uh, it uses internally, we use Heat to deploy the applications uh, which internally may use NOAA Docker driver or may, can also use other capabilities like from Magnum to deploy to container clusters. Now, when we were starting to look at how we can do CI, CD with Solem or existing tools like Jenkins, there were these three options that we considered. So you could do CI, CD with directly Solem the disadvantage of that option is there are many organizations who may already have some investment in existing tools like Jenkins, and uh, they would not want to necessarily change their workflows for the CI part. The advantage of doing everything in Solem is you don't have to manage two different systems like Jenkins and OpenStack. For Jenkins, for using something, uh, for doing both CI and CD, uh, the advantage is you uh, just have everything uh, again in one system, but 
then you don't, uh, for complex workflows, and if you already have an OpenStack setup, then that may, may become a little bit too complex. So the best of both worlds we thought would be that we, you use so Jenkins for your existing Jenkins for doing your uh, continuous integration setup. And then once the artifact has been created, hand it over to Solom to actually deploy it. So it's essentially a divide and conquer approach. Let uh, Jenkins do the things that Jenkins is good at and then uh, hand it over to Solom to actually do the infrastructure provisioning, application lifecycle management for the containers, and so on. So this is the uh, overview of the solution that uh, we have built. So essentially, we have uh, a Git repository which is configured to receive uh, web hooks uh, to a Jenkins job creator will generate jobs ba dynamically based on the webhook that it will receive. And then it will actually go through and those jobs are configured to run uh, project specific tests. And once the tests are run, uh, the artifact which is created, it is stored in a place where Solum can use it and you use it to deploy the artifact. So in Solom, there is a notion of uh, application image, which is a Docker container. All the applications are packaged as uh, Docker containers. So uh, that's the image which is going to get deployed. And the artifact repository that we are going to use is essentially Glance. So Solom is able to read things from Glance and deploy it. So the Jenkins setup, uh, once it runs uh, the test, is going to store those application Docker images in Glance and then invoke Solom just to do the CD part. And then uh, Solom will deploy it to the existing infrastructure. So some additional details here. Uh, we have the Jenkins job creator, which will uh, create these dynamic jobs based on triggers. And then uh, the main issue that we faced is how do you uh, mesh the Jenkins setup with an OpenStack setup? Because Solom is natively uh, understands uh, Keystone tokens and everything is native to uh, OpenStack. The solution was we define a Jenkins user, uh, and that jo Jenkins user is the one which is going to run your uh, tests, and then uh, is going to s store the application Docker image into Glance as that user. And the jobs that are going to get created are uh, essentially jobs for cloning the repository, testing application, uh, building the Docker image, and then invoking Solum to deploy it. Now, as part of CI CD, we have the issue of how do we get the logs. So for the CI part, we are saying that you can use whatever existing log collection tools that you can define in Jenkins and uh, uh, you can send the logs to something like a external uh, rabbit service, which can then publish it to some other place where they can be available. As far as the deployment side is concerned, Solum generates uh, and captures all the deployment logs and makes them available in Swift. So you can just access the logs for the deployment parts in Swift. So now I'm going to quickly show you the demo and walk you through the, while I show the demo, I'll talk about how the, what is happening in each step. Which one do you want to? Yeah, you can take it. So the, Okay, so the demo consists of uh, several steps. The first step was to uh, create the Jenkins job. That's what we are showing it right now. There are no jobs. Uh, once we receive a GitHub trigger, that is the 
repository, by the way, where all the templates and uh, jobs are available. So the four jobs that we have here are to build uh, the initial jobs configuration, which is what is being shown right now. The other templates that we have jobs, job templates are for testing an application and uh, deploying an application image, application saving an image and so on. So in this uh, example, we just have four jobs, but then there can be more jobs. And that's why we are creating these jobs dynamically on uh, receiving a Git trigger. And this is the configuration file which, uh, which which is used as part of the proxy server, which configures and decides what uh, exact things to create as part of the jobs. So now we are starting up the proxy server. And then uh, this is where we are starting up the a uh, RabbitMQ consumer, so which will essentially print logs from each step. And then those are the four uh, jobs that are going to happen, steps which are going to happen. So let's, right now we are essentially changing some code and are going to do a commit of this code to see how that triggers the application, uh, the job creation and the deployment. So this is all set up, uh, done locally using GitLab. Now we see that the jobs have got created and we can look at the view of how the uh, job is progressing. So we see that the first job has got triggered and then on the console for our RabbitMQ consumer, we are seeing all the logs which are getting uh, generated. So currently for the CI step, the logs that are generated are synchronous. After each step, we are capturing these logs after the end of every uh, job which has run. So the app tests have passed now. So the tests are green. The saving image job will uh, store the application container image to glance and then hand it over to Solum to deploy it. So that's the glance image create. Uh, we essentially use the glance CLI as part of the uh, CI uh, job step to uh, upload the image to glance. So in this setup of Solum, we are using Nova Docker as the driver. Uh, so the dev stack, and this is all in dev stack right now, uh, is showing that the container, application container will be uh, deployed on using the Nova Docker driver. So the, this is now the last step where we are showing that the image ID, that uh, that particular highlighted image ID is the one which is being passed to the Solum app deploy command. So uh, the o Solum is only being invoked to deploy an already created application image. And the deployment is done. So now the last step is just to check that the, uh, the application was correctly deployed, whatever uh, changes we made. So showing right now that the app has been deployed. 
that's the IP address of the app, and if you curl it, you will see that the change that we made on that particular, uh, as part of the commit, has been now uh, reflected in the deployed app. So that's essentially the demo part. And let me now continue with the, so some of the discussion. As I said, the logs of the deployment are uh, captured by Solom and they are uploaded to the Swift container. So in this case, the, it will be the Swift container of the Jenkins user and you would be able to, uh, there are commands, uh, CLI commands within Solom, which would allow you to get the logs. Now, another question in typical CI CD setups is how do you do deployments to different environments, uh, dev test, staging, et cetera. So what, the way you can do that in uh, this setup is you can deploy the same image that you, uh, once you create an image, you don't have to rebuild it again. You can just deploy it uh, multiple times, and th those will be your different, essentially, environments. What about things like uh, passing in environment-specific uh, like databases or parameters, essentially? So the, one, the way that can be done is Solom has a feature to inject parameters in, uh, as part of application create, and also we are right now in the process of adding support to inject parameters at the time of application deployment. So once uh, using those features, it, will be, it is possible to specify different uh, backend databases for different environments. Then how about things like uh, Canary deployments and uh, blue-green deployments? So those, again, are, uh, should be possible with the way you can do that is you deploy your, uh, deploy your app and have two different parallel deployments of your app. And then based on when the routing, uh, all the traffic has been moved from uh, one uh, app to the other, you can uh, either kill the other, the previous app, or keep using it, and that same thing can be used for rollback as well. Uh, on rollback point, you can also uh, roll back to a previous version because all the uh, image, images, application images which are created, they are available in Glance. So Glance is our, uh, essentially, the version repository for application artifacts. So that's what we have currently done. Some of the additional things that uh, we are going to look at is how do you add manual control uh, as part of the CI CD process. So uh, there are solutions like uh, using the Jenkins' uh, pipeline input step. How about things like supporting multiple uh, user repositories? So that should be possible in the current setup itself uh, as long as the Git triggers are configured correctly, uh, it should be possible. And uh, then the final question is, how about if users already have OpenStack accounts? Uh, how do you, ca can you do something that uh, the logs will be available for each individual user in their own uh, containers in Swift? So one of the ideas that we have uh, explored is, can we use something like impersonation where uh, the CD step uh, after it has done uh, and generated the logs, is able to uh, store the logs in the end user's containers. So the <laughs> Jenkins setup code is available on the first um, link, and then if you are interested in Solom, we have our fishbowl session today at uh, 4 o'clock uh, in, uh, in the Hilton. So come join us. Uh, a lot of, I'll, I'll be showing a demo of Solom as well and some additional features. That's it. Thank you. Sure. Yes.
Uh, nice presentation. Thanks Thank a lot. Um, so does Solem have the capability uh, with the UI dashboard from which we can orchestrate this, number one? Uh, the Docker image creation, so we sh you showed that like it is outside the uh, scope of Solem actually. So it only uses the uh, created Docker image. Uh, as. So uh, does Solem have the inbuilt capability um, uh, to create Docker images uh, from the Solem command line or itself? So two questions. Okay, so good questions, thank you. Uh, let me answer the second question first. So Solem does have a capability to create Docker images starting from the source code. In fact, that is the main uh, feature of Solem that starting from your source code in a GitHub repository, uh, either it could be private or public repository, we build the Docker image optionally running unit test if you have specified them, and then once that Docker image is built, we save it to Glance, Swift, or Docker registry, and then we also do the deployment. So yes, Solem does have capability to build a Docker image as well. In this uh, setup and this uh, talk, we did not use that because the uh, point was what if organizations already have something which they are using to build Docker images? So for those organizations and those kind of setups, it, uh, Solem can also be used only to deploy it, was the point. But yes, Solem does have capability to build Docker images. The first question was, is there a way to uh, use Solem from uh, using something like Horizon? And yes, we do have a Horizon plugin. Uh, the work, uh, it's currently under work, and it will, be, uh, it will be worked on in this cycle. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, so how do you uh, evaluate this entire POC? So right now what you can do is, um, so Solom's Getting Started Guide will show you how to set up a dev stack environment which has all the OpenStack services along with Solom, uh, very easy to set up. And then the Jenkins setup has steps to actually set up GitLab and uh, the integration part which are required between uh, GitLab, Jenkins, and Solom. So let me know if uh, that readme or the guides are not very uh, helpful, and I'll help you get started on that. And our email, my email address is on the very first slide, but otherwise you can find me on uh, Solom IRC as well. It's a uh, free node. So that's my email address, uh, first name dot last name at rackspace.com. And I'm also on Solom IRC. Uh, and today evening, we have the fishbowl session uh, in which I'll show uh, capabilities like starting from the source code, building the application image, and actually deploying it. Uh, I'll, I'll demo demonstrate that. Any other questions? All right. Thank you.